principles that guide my teaching were formed and sustained. These principles animate what I do. To me, they are self-evident. As I mention them briefly, I hope they will speak to your own classroom practice. First, when I look out at my students in my classroom, I see writers. My teaching is aimed at the writer I see in each of them, whether or not they are capable of recognizing the writer in themselves. I say this because as human beings, we are makers, in particular, makers of meaning. And to me, this is the essential work of teaching writing, honoring the maker in each student. Second, it's important for each of us who teaches writing to have a sustained practice of writing. We need to be engaged in the craft and in the struggles. It makes us better teachers. Third, drafts need to be read aloud in small groups. Why? Because we need to hear our own words in our ears. We need to feel them in our mouths. We need to sense them in our bodies. Nothing does this better than reading aloud, especially to a receptive audience. Fourth, all the voices in our classrooms need to be heard, even when we disagree, or more importantly, especially when we disagree. Fifth, a truly emancipatory pedagogy includes the ability to listen, both to what students are saying and to their silences. And sixth, teaching today needs to embrace the digital, which offers exciting new avenues for making, for composing, and along with this, new avenues for teaching and for research. I have been able to test these ideas, to enact my beliefs, to observe what happens when these principles are turned into practice in my 45 years in this profession. So I'd like to close with an image that comes from my classroom. It's an image of students sitting together in groups. It's an image of students reading their drafts out loud, sharing their work, and listening generously to one another. It's an image in which students lower their voices to say something revealing, or pause to put a hand on another's shoulder, or of students smiling and laughing together, finding a shared you know, com commonality and shared stories, and sometimes sharing a moment of sadness and wiping away a tear. It's an image that never feels f fails to touch me, for what I see in those groups is a vision of a democratic classroom where students' ideas and students' voices are center stage, and where listening and engaging in dialogue are the central components that move the work forward. I don't know of a more powerful way to teach students that it is possible to see beyond our differences, beyond what separates us from one another, than in the daily work of making and sharing the meanings that come to us through writing. For 45 years, I have found this work to be profoundly sustaining, and I thank you for honoring it by honoring me.